Welcome back everyone, I'm Amun Work, and in this screencast we will learn more about Adonis framework. Now guys, in order to get started with any framework, the best part is to look into the official documentation. So, if I go to the docs, the very first step is to install that we have already done. Next is basics, which talks about routing, middleware, controllers, requests, and response with views. And believe me guys, this is almost everything you need in order to set up an HTTP application or a server. So very first, we will get started with routing. Now, if any one of you is not aware about what routing is or what are routes, then routes are basically endpoints that you expose in order to make sure other people can reach to your application. So in order to view this particular page called routing, you are heading the route called docs 1.0 slash routing, or you can call them URLs also. Now, in order to create a route, you have to get into the file called routes.js, which is inside the HTTP folder inside app directory. So, we will go to that folder here, and we'll open the routes file, we will delete everything out here, and we'll start by creating new fresh route. Now guys, in order to create routes, you can basically attach multiple HTTP verbs. Now, what are HTTP verbs? If you are not sure about them, you can make a quick Google search about HTTP verbs. Basically, Adonis gives you access to get, post, put, delete, and patch HTTP verbs. You can use all of these methods in order to create and register different routes. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say route.get and you know a slash. Again, we're gonna attach a closure to it, which is basically a ES6 generator. Again, if you're not sure about it, you will have to do a quick Google search because we are not talking about generators in this video. So what exactly we are doing out here is we are registering a route which will respond only to GET requests and any request that comes to the base URL. So this is the way we actually define the base, or I would say the root URL. We will actually invoke this function. So for the most simplest route, we can say return, hello world, okay? Let's go back to terminal and say npm start. Once we run that, it's going to run a server for us. It's a serving app on port 3333. Now guys, if you're wondering what is npm start, so basically npm lets you register multiple scripts inside your package file. So what I've done is uh, we have created a start script which runs in node harmony proxies server.js file. Now if you want, you can also run this command but for short code, you can say npm start. Next, if we'll come back and we'll open in localhost 33333, it says hello world. So that this is the most basic way in order to create an HTTP route and respond to that particular request. Let's see what more we can do with it. Next, what we're gonna do is, uh, instead of returning like a hello world from here, we'll make use of the response object. So here we're gonna say request and response. Now these are two objects that have been passed with every callback that is attached to a route. So here, instead of returning, this time we're gonna say response.send hello world using response object. Now, if I come back and refresh, obviously we have to restart the server. This is how it works in Node.js. Now we can see hello world is using response objects. Next, what we're gonna do is, let's say we're looking for a way in order to greet someone if they actually pass their name as a query string on here. So if I say name foo, we can probably say hello foo, right? So what we're gonna do out here is, we are going to make use of the request object. Here, I'm gonna say constant name. I'm gonna say request.input, and here, I'm gonna say name. 
So we are actually looking for the main key on rep list or is for a or body. Next, I'm going to say response.send. Here, I'm going to say hello. Directly. That looks good. Let's restart the server here. Come back. It says hello, foo. Most probably we can share it. Now it says on work, right? That's cool. Maybe now we are not interested in, you know, like pretty strings. We want it to be something like this, right? In that case, we are basically going to attach parameters which are basically dynamic segments to our routes. So what I can say is I can say column and name. What exactly we are saying is whenever a get request is made on the root path with anything, so basically what we are saying anything, give it to us as name. Now all we really need to do is instead of using request.input, we can say request.param. That's all. Now come back, restart our server. Out here, if I refresh, it's the same result. And that is, that's done with the param. Now we can do one more thing with params. We can make them optional. Right now, if, if I go back and I don't pass it like this, it says route not found. Because we are expecting a name here, and if you're not passing it here, According to Adonis, it's not a valid URL, so it's an HTTP exception for a for route not found. Now, what exactly we can do is we can make it optional, which means if someone passes a name, it's fine. If they really don't pass a name, we'll do something else, right? What else are we going to do? Here, I'm going to say fill out. Now, don't worry about this second parameter. First, we are going to make sure it works. Now, restart application it says hello fella now the prem network basically accept two arguments first is the key that we are looking up for second is the default value of in case we are not able to find this key which is true in this particular case now if i enter a name i said work it says hello work but if i don't enter a name instead of hitting a photo for route it actually says hello fella and this all happened by adding a caution mark in the NFR dynamic parameter out here. Now guys, what all we have been doing out here is basically related to a closure. The callback method we have defined here is a closure. It is pretty good and handy, but for big applications, we are usually going to define a ton of routes. They are going to call different models in order to fetch data. It's really not a nice thing to write everything inside one file. This is the reason we have a controller layer while working with Adonis. So I'm going to remove everything from here. Here I'm going to say home controller.breed. Now, this is basically a string which Adonis understands and it's going to resolve a controller with a method for you out of the box. So what exactly we are saying, whenever someone calls this particular route, go to home controller and look for a method called breed. Now, if we get into the controller's directory, you will see we already have a file called home controller. Now guys, do make sure the name file has to match with the string out here and it is case sensitive. Now, if I go to home controller, we already have an index method. We are not going to touch it. Instead of that, we are going to copy and paste our closure that we had earlier. I'm going to remove this from here. Here, I'm going to say read. That's all really we need to do in order to set up a controller method. Then go back, again, restart the server, refresh, and you'll see everything is working as expected. Let me enter my name. Cool, it works fine. In this way, we can also define post routes, which will actually listen to post request only. We can define patch, put, we can do a lot of stuff with routing. But for now, I believe, guys, that's all. In the next video, we're going to talk about something else. So, till then, goodbye.